Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to St. Peter Mancroft Church here in the centre of Norwich. Um, my name is Jill Persica, I'm one of the lay ministers here and I'd like to welcome you to our regular Wednesday lunchtime reflection which today is on the subject of street art. But let's make a start in prehistoric times. Take a Stone Age person, give them a cave wall and some pigments, some, some charcoal and animal blood or whatever, and what does that person do? They make art. They cover that cave wall with animals and people and handprints and so forth. Give a modern toddler a newly decorated kitchen wall and a handful of crayons, and what do they do? Yep, yeah, they do something very similar, a bit of exuberant and colourful self-expression. And as I've been walking through an underpass on my way into the city centre recently, the, um, the Pottergate underpart, underpass under Grapes Hill, I've been observing the results of a similar creative impulse. The outpouring of shape and colour which happens when modern people, often but not always young people, are given a wall and several cans of spray paint. Note that I've very carefully said that these people are given that wall. Because, yes, the Pottergate underpass is designated as an approved street art venue by Norwich City Council. My subject today is not the illegal graffiti which you see all over the city, mainly those spray-painted tags which decorate or deface our walls and wheelie bins and empty shop fronts though it is interesting to start our reflection by thinking just why people choose to put their tags all over the place. A tag is, of course, the graffiti artist's name or pseudonym, but written in their own unique style. So there's already evidence of creativity. But I think there's other things happening here too. Tagging can be a way of asserting and building up your own sense of your identity. It can be a way of marking out your territory, saying, this is my place. It can be a really powerful way of expressing how very fed up and angry you are about things. It can even be an act of bravado. If you look out of a train window in any city nowadays, you'll see tags in impossibly dangerous places. How on earth did anybody manage to paint that there? In these cases, the tag is the artistic equivalent of a horrendously dangerous skateboard stunt. But back to the Pottergate underpass, which is at present mostly decorated with artists' tags. But these are not just swift monochrome sketches, they're highly designed images, brilliantly colourful, and they're often really sweeping in shape, because that, that's what happens quite naturally when you have a can of spray paint in your hand. I've stood and watched some of these young artists at work and I've been really impressed in many ways by their preparation and discipline and their skill and by their intense focus while they're working. And I recognise all of these characteristics from watching other, much more conventional artists at work, people like watercolourists and painters in oil and so forth. But street art isn't individual work neatly framed up. It's painting on public walls which are already smothered with colour so that the shapes overlap and they partially obliterate each other so that the whole thing looks rich and layered and just bursting with life. Pottergate Underpass has become a kind of community artwork. It's modern folk art in a way, and it's constantly changing. This kind of street art is remarkable for its transient nature. 
its impermanence. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen one of those pavement artists at work. There's one who makes fairly big pictures on the ground at the bottom of Norwich Market during the summer. He uses coloured chalks, of course, not spray paint, and he makes incredibly detailed and skilful artworks. And here's a question for you. If you were his final viewer, the last person to be there when he packs up and goes home, would you then feel comfortable walking straight over his picture and thus beginning to destroy it? It reminds me a bit of something I saw a team of Buddhist monks do once in Norwich. They made an extraordinary image, a mandala, on the ground using just coloured sand. And it was so elaborate it took a team of them several days to make. And many Norwich people came to watch them do it and to see the final result. And what happened to this masterpiece? Because it was a masterpiece. Well, one of the monks got a broom and simply brushed it away. Beauty and discipline and focus and skill and utter transience. A profound reflection, I think, of the human condition. But not all of Norwich's street art is transient, of course. If you live in Norwich, you may, if you've got your eyes open, be aware of the big permanent murals dotted around the city centre. There are nine of them in total, and I think they were um, commissioned and put there as part of the Norwich City of Stories initiative. And my favourite mural is the huge red dragon called Snap the Dragon, which you can see if you look high up across the road from the corner of Marks and Spencer. Dragons and Norwich go together, of course. We even have a wonderful medieval hall called Dragon Hall. And so this enormous mural not only cheers us and excites our kids, but it also says something really important about the history and the culture of our city. And then you only have to walk a couple of minutes from Snap the Dragon to come to another mural, painted on both wall and ceiling of the tunnel that runs up to Castle Meadow from the Royal Arcade. I particularly love the ceiling, which includes a quote from the great Persian poet Rumi. It goes like this. Let yourself be silently drawn to the stronger pull of what you really love. And round this quotation, there are painted four simple words. Fear none. Love all. Now those particular words may or may not be to your taste, but you can't fail to miss their positive intention. Not all street art is positive in intention, of course. I've sometimes seen stuff which is hate-filled and aggressive or actually obscene. With street art, all human life is there. Of course it is. There was a startling example of this in 2020, when a local artist, Ruth Knapp, painted a huge Black Lives Matter artwork in the Pottergate underpass. An anonymous passerby put in a complaint to Norwich City Council, who, without examining the work, organised contractors to come and paint it over which caused a huge hullabaloo, resulting in the City Council actually commissioning Ruth to repaint her work. But within a few days, it had been defaced again, this time covered with nasty racist graffiti. But Ruth, the artist, stuck to her guns and returned time and time again in order to repair her work. This, I think, is street art really doing a job within the community, raising an important issue and then provoking a kind of public debate by spray can. 
Something important happened with that mural, in my opinion, and it made a lot of people think. I could go on and on about our local street art. I'm a great enthusiast. And I've been asking myself just why it feels so very important to me. I think it's partly because Norwich is such an extraordinarily beautiful and historic city of the, of the kind which can sometimes become rather precious and touristy, like, like some kind of heritage experience. And so it does feel important that there's also something edgier on view in our streets, something really contemporary and at times a bit challenging, something which shouts assertively, hey, this city is alive now. But above all, the street art I see connects me with the people who made it, people who are very different from myself, to be honest, but people who have many of the same concerns as we have in this church. Concerns about human identity and belonging, burning indignation at the sheer blooming injustice of this world, an interest in creativity, and a profound acceptance of the transience of things. Creating and attending to art is a wonderful way of bringing people together and it's something lovely in the eyes of God. Thank you very much for joining me for today's reflection and I wish you every blessing for the rest of the day.